Hello and welcome back to Kvikminderpod, an Icelandic cinema podcast. I'm Rob Watts and as ever I'm joined by my good friend Ellie Cawthorn for another journey through the cinematic landscape of 21st century Iceland. We've come to the end of the series with this, episode 6, and the film under discussion this week is Baltasar Kormakur's The Oath, or Eidrin, from 2016. Written and directed by and starring Baltasar himself, and featuring, once again, Hera Hilmar and Gisliu and Gardason, this is a thriller of the kind Kormakur must surely have seen come and go during his time in Hollywood. It follows heart surgeon Finner as he takes increasingly drastic measures to look out for his drug addict daughter. This is certainly the most commercial looking of all the Icelandic language films we've covered this series, and it looks particularly smart with stunning cinematography from Otto Gudnason, and sounds amazing too, thanks to Hilda Gudnadottir's evocative cello-led score. For the final time this series, a reminder that we are always contactable on social media, where we're at Kvikmindapod, that's K-V-I-K-M-Y-N-D-A-P-O-D, on Instagram, X and Threads, and Discord. Okay then. Back to middle class Reykjavik we go. Hello. Hello. We're back for episode six. Six and final. Of series six. Six, six, six. Well, two sixes. We just need one more. Where can we get the sixth, six, the third, sixth from? Hmm. We'll figure that out by the end of the <laughs> podcast. Um, this week we're doing a film called The Oath. Now, there are like a thousand films called The Oath. Oh, yeah, no. It's very confusing. The thing that helps us out, actually is that it does have an Icelandic title. It's called Eidurin. And it sees the return of Baltasar Kormakur. Get in! <laughs> Here he is, Hollywood legend. Legend? I don't know, he's made three films in Hollywood. I'm not sure Hollywood would agree with that, but sure. <laughs> hey, he's worked with Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg. Like, I mean, he's got some pedigree. Maybe not a legend. Um, but this is The Oath, which he made in 2016. After he'd made his three Hollywood films, Two Guns, Contraband, which was the remake of Reykjavik, Rotterdam. Yeah. And Everest. Have you ever seen that? Everest? Yeah. Is it film, about, film about the, the one where they all go up Everest? That's it. Could have guessed, really. Yeah, it's in the title. Um, With Jake Gyllenhaal in? I can't remember. I haven't seen it anyway. It's good. It's good. It's got Ingvar in it. Ah. Yeah, he's like the tiniest character, but... He's in it. It's uh, it's pretty good. Anyway, he basically did three Hollywood films and then was like, nah, made some money. <laughs> I'm going to come back to Iceland, set up his studio, mm-hmm. RVK Studios, which obviously produced this film. And um, yeah, made this kind of small Icelandic film, which I guess has shades of Hollywood in it. I also, though, think it has shades of... Um... BBC Sunday night drama in it. You know, like what? Dr. Foster, 
Um, okay, I can see that. Or like a Harlan Coben adaptation on Netflix. You know, yeah, no, totally. I like do see that. Yeah, somebody forced into the Inside Man was another recent one. Somebody forced into a situation, just a normal person forced into a kind of a true crime scenario. Yeah, bit like a uh, Taken. Yeah, it has it shades a, of Taken. It's Baltasar Cormac who's got a special set of skills. What is it? What's the phrase? <laughs> and the skills include administering drugs, doing open heart <laughs> surgery, and sewing cycling. Up. Oh, cycling, yeah, and sewing up wounds that yes. he's inflicted himself. Yes, very handy, actually. Yeah, he's quite. it's a man of many talents, this Cormac <laughs> or guy. Um, so, yeah, this is The Oath, and basically the story is Cormac or plays a heart surgeon whose daughter is pretty much a massive drug addict, mm. and he basically wants to get her away from her dodgy boyfriend, who is, is a suspected drug dealer. Drug dealer, and he's obviously like not helping at all. No, but I mean that's it. It's if you think about Taken, but then take away the kind of action element, mm. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty much you know the whole film. Yeah, uh, it's essentially guy wants his daughter to be safe, um, and gets rid of the bad influence. In this case, his daughter is played by Hera Hilmar, mm-hmm. who, I'm just going to say, this is the Hera Hilmar season. This is the third one I we've know. had. I know, yeah, she's everywhere. Yeah, um, and her boyfriend is played by Gisli Urn Garthason, who Woo-hoo. we saw in Wild Game. <laughs> and you Very sent me a message. Role. You sent me a message <laughs> last night. Tell me what it said. <laughs> oh, it said... To be fair, the dodgy boyfriend is very fit. (laughs) (laughs) You weren't saying that at the start of the season. No, I mean, we could. it's a chalk and cheese performances that we've got from him, Mm. that we saw him in Wild Game as this quite clean cut, buttoned up guy. Here, he's, Mm. you know, the bad boy with bells on. He's got the tats. He's got the dog. He, he's got the jewellery <laughs> to prove. Crucifix jewellery, always a sign, you know, yeah. in films indicating that somebody is dodgy. Yeah, he is. And his name is Otter. His girlfriend is Anna. And Anna's dad is Finner. And so, yeah, he seems like a bad guy, but we don't see that much that he does that is bad. Do we no, really? not to start off with, for sure. Like, um, I thought the most interesting part of this film was the beginning half hour or so, right. where Finna basically is is trying to reestablish this relationship with his daughter, mm-hmm. cling on to her as she's like slipping away into addiction, and Otter is this obviously bad influence, but he's. It, the most interesting part I thought of it was before we kind of just go full throttle, let's get him out mm. of here, which we'll go into later. This part where Finn is trying to kind of walk a tightrope of do I negotiate with him? Do I pretend to like him and then hope he'll drop off the scene? Yeah. You know, like the kind of more uh, quiet resistance to it which I thought was quite interestingly done because he didn't go in just immediately like, he's a bad guy, get him out of here, because no. that doesn't work. No, he invites him round for dinner. He tries to do that kind of, I'll just stand back and, mm. you know, Anna will see that he's a bad guy and step away. But unfortunately, he's bad enough that he is obviously feeding that habit, that addiction. And Anna seems to really love him. Like... She says it like a thousand times, mm. so many times, and start to the point where I was like, "Oh, maybe she does actually love him." I think she does actually truly love, love him. I think, I mean, she's she's slightly kind of confused, I'm sure, by the fact that she's locked in this addiction. But also, I do think that he is given enough humanity in the characterization of him. Yeah, he's definitely like horribly nasty at <laughs> some points, but you also see the signs that he is, he can be kind of charming and he can be loving. At what point is he particularly loving? Though? When they have the bit, the scene together where they're looking at the globe and saying, oh, yes. where shall we go? We're going to have this great life together. Um, and we don't actually see any scenes of him being particularly aggressive to her or abusive to her. The, inf- the inference is more that he's, you know, feeding her 
drug addiction. Yeah. Rather than that he's abusive. But I wonder, that's obviously true. But if he really cares for her and loves her, which he says he does, why is he allowing her to be that way? Like, he can be a drug dealer without his girlfriend being a druggie. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm not... I'm not defending him. Look, you sound like you (laughs) want him to live. In the Yota (laughs) Defence League here, I'm just saying I did think that I could buy into the fact that she loved him. Okay. (sighs) Why do you get well, that's quite important for the film, for, for, the, for the audience to believe exactly. that Anna does love him and that Otter reciprocates but, that love. But also, I guess... Um, added to that he's facilitating this addiction whereas her dad's trying to challenge her and cut off her supply basically and i mean that's obviously gonna feed those feelings as well yes i suppose so she needs the drugs and she's got Mm. a ready supply i wonder what drugs she takes we hear about coke do we reckon it's just coke no it's looking a bit more heavy than that don't you think well it seems heavier, but what I will say, and this was kind of the only strong negative I had about this film, was that, to me, Anna did not look like a drug addict. Now, obviously, drug you addicts... You mean just the fact she wore a leather jacket and a cap didn't tell you that? And had black eye makeup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the eye. Yeah, like, oh, is that a lot the... of eyeliner game in this film. <laughs> a lot of eyeliner. Yeah, I feel like that's not, it's not enough to mm. convince me that she's a full-on drug addict. I mean, sure, there are functioning addicts, Mm. who can live normal lives and she's not quite that but in if you compare her to the girls in let me fall yeah that's like an entirely yeah different level and i suppose maybe one of the things is that this is two years previous to let me fall had icelandic audiences seen this kind of thing on screen before is it kind of the first step into portraying drug addiction in icelandic cinema i'm not i don't know that so if anyone out there does, let us know. But if it is, then okay, that I can kind of accept that this is a portrayal, a more sort of... Tame, I guess. Yeah. The portrayal of drug addiction here is is more tame or more palatable. Yeah. Like, I mean, we don't see, like, the horrible, dirty needles. We don't see, like, you know... We don't even see her take any drugs mm. at all, do we? But I guess all of, all of the film, or the majority of the film, we're seeing things through Finner's eyes. True. So he's not there. Not privy to So when, when these parties are happening and she's supposedly, you know, getting high at these parties, we're with him outside of the door hearing the party from outside. Mm-hmm. We're not in there seeing the reality yes, of it. Yes, very true. Uh, how could we know? But also, how could he know? Mm. He's just suspicious. And then I suppose there's that point where he finds a bag of drugs. But there's a sense, though, as well, that this is we're not being plopped in at the start of the story here. We're entering, you know, a family and a a story that's already ongoing. In media res. Is that what you mean? (laughs) And so there's a sense that, you know, she's left home. She's late for this funeral. Typical her. This this is a pattern of behavior that is already established before we appear. But do you think that that cycle that Anna's going through is like spurred on by the family situation? Because I suppose we can set up that the family is Finna, his second wife, Solveig, their daughter, Reina, and Anna's mum lives in LA. So Mm. there's something's happened there. They've split up and now Anna is a drug addict. But I, I mean, I can't possibly answer the massive Look, question of nature versus nurture on, in addiction <laughs> roles in the time. This of is this the podcast. space to explore <laughs> in but depth. I guess. I mean, this is another house, like in Wild Game, that is oh, absolutely mad. It's aspirational. Yeah, as fuck. I feel like Iceland's 
upper middle class has some absolutely banging houses. Yeah, banging houses, banging taste in mm. furniture and just general knickknacks. Mid-century stylings. Oh, so absolutely nice. Absolutely gorgeous. Those walls of books, that sofa. Sofa that's like the length of the room. Mm. Oh. But I guess the idea is that, you know, she's had this very comfortable upbringing. She has a dad, at least, who's very supportive, maybe an absent mum, but mm. a dad who's clearly got her back. So it's she's maybe a bit of a... She's not probably the usual profile of a drug user. No, possibly took drugs as a break away from that mm. safe, comfy lifestyle. Anyway, this is all very spurious. She is a drug addict, like you say. We've 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 come to it. Mm. This is a situation. Um, so Finna is a heart surgeon, as we said. He's obviously very good at being a heart surgeon. He can get a heart started with the tap of his finger. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, superhero. He cares for his daughter, and he loves to cycle. Where were you going with that? <laughs> I don't know he's just a very controlled man. Mm. He is obviously yeah very capable. A stand-up member of society, I guess he would be on the on the outset. Yeah, I think you'd you'd say he's he's saving lives. He's got a got the perfect kind of family situation from the outside. He also there is that classic dad thing of like he's not very expressive of his emotions, is no. he? He's he's quite contained. So a lot of what he's planning, you don't necessarily. He's not kind of expressing a lot of emotion about it even when he's doing some quite dicey things no he just yeah gets on with it doesn't he? yeah i know where to find the drugs i know where to be i Mm. know what door to lock and all of that kind of stuff and yeah i guess there's the one illusion that kind of sets up why he might have this slightly i don't know brutal side to him that his dad might have Mm. been abusive which is brought up by otter but I mean, that again, that's just as spurious as what I was saying, I think. Mm. So it's, it is interesting that this man who's so controlled and saving lives is then obviously attempting to take away mm. on another. And that's what the film opens with the Hippocratic Oath. I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's like saving lives, taking lives. What can I do? <laughs> so obviously he decides the only course of action is to get Otto framed by the police, by planting some drugs in his house. Do you think that that was his first aim? Right, just do that, get him arrested, the end. Well, he didn't plant them though, did he? He just went to find them and he found them. Mm. But I guess that would have been the simplest route out of it, yeah. Mm. Because I was going to ask, I hadn't actually thought about that. But yeah, that would have been the simplest way to do it. Obviously, it didn't work for all the reasons Otter explains. Someone saw him break in. Why didn't he just go to the police and or well, do an anonymous call and say, this guy's a big drug dealer, go to his house and you'll find those drugs? It's a good point because he goes to the police a few times saying, my daughter needs rescuing. Mm. And they're like, well, she's an adult, so we can't do anything. So that's obviously a bit of a difference between let me fool and the oath. Because Anna is her, is a person, is an adult herself. So, you know, the police are mm. useless for doing anything. Um, so if he changed tack and was just like, yeah, report this druggie, it might work better. Just do it anonymously. <clears throat> but Otto will definitely know it's him. I think that's possibly why he hasn't done it. Because he can be pretty obvious about saying my daughter. But if he then tips them off, I don't know. It could have been anyone. Yeah, it could have been. But it's quite clearly thinner, I think. Uh, I don't know. It would have been much easier, yeah, if the police had turned up and then been like, oh, you must be a drug dealer. But they don't. And so what is his next actual step? Because, I mean, we might as well talk about what he actually does now. Well, Otto then begins to blackmail him. And then it all spirals. I mean, why didn't he see that coming? He's so dumb. Uh, I don't know. Let's briefly outline what happens then. So Otto Mm. says, Otto basically says, I need all this money from you. Mm Mm-hmm. Because your daughter's snorted or whatever. The... I thought it was the drugs that he'd found and the police had 
Oh. So those drugs. Ah, uh, I've watched this film twice and I did not realise that. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> oh, this is why this podcast is mm. so good. I can think these things okay. through. We feel you're alive, you Fólk <laughs> Og færði enga peninga hjá mér, drullaði hann út og láttu ekki sjáði þetta nóttum er aftur. Fokkinn spáði þetta, hvað er þetta maður? Það er Ok, so yeah, so Otter blackmails Finna for the money mm-hmm. that He's lost because of the coke. Yeah, and Finna says, well, while we're at this blackmail, I'll actually overpay you. You know, I'll give you what you want and more if you leave Anna. And he says, no. Does he offer more? Yeah. I thought Otto was after six mil and Finna was offering three mil. Oh, okay. Well, he's still trying to convince him to pay him off, basically. Yeah, which again is a better option than killing him. (laughs) <laughs> but obviously, the love and the money, it's all wrapped up in one Anna-shaped bow, I guess. Like, mm. this is, he needs the money. It's interesting that the film never shows who's on Otto's back about yeah. the drugs. Like, they're this presence. It's quite contained, isn't it? Like, we don't have a sprawling cast of characters. We really just focus in on the main ones. Did you feel that Otto was really being threatened and he was concerned for his life and that's why he was blackmailing Finna? Or what, he was just doing it as kind of a fuck you? Yeah. Um, Maybe not really concerned for his life. I got it as more of a, like, you try and mess with me. Yeah. Well, I'll show you what I'm made of. Yeah, fair enough. Side question. Side question. How old do you think he was meant to be? Otter. So good question. So um, Anna is 18. 18. Mm. Because Gisli Earn Gartherson is 50 years old. Looks good for it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so in 2016, he would have been. Take away eight. <laughs> <laughs> 42. Okay. 42, Not that 18. Old. Pretty big diff. Yeah. Do you think he's meant to be 42? No. I don't think he looks 42. No, he doesn't. Either. No, you he can looks tell about, me more about 35. <laughs> Ban <laughs> on. still good for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, there's a dynamic there, isn't there? Uh, that he's he's an older person taking advantage of a... Mm. Possibly was a minor until recently mm. while they were together. But I got us off the track there. That's okay. Which was... Finna escalates this plan... To taking him out to a place where there's like, it's not that remote. Shooting him with like a sawed off shotgun while like bullets that spray everywhere. Yeah, that was an interesting choice. Why? Because he's heard that, you know, this is what people do on the streets now. They cut off the ends and nails and it doesn't kill you, but it sends a message. To make it look like a gang job. Yeah, because he was there, someone came into the hospital, didn't they? What is the plan here? Uh, This is... This is what this is where it me. falls apart a bit. There's no chance that he'll let. Surely, if he let Otter go, yeah, that he either Finna is then dead, or yeah, he'd just come and murder him in the night. Yeah, there's only one outcome here, which That's... is you gotta murder him. Because he it's interesting because he doesn't even like torture him. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I'm not. What if it was you? Would you have done some torture? Many of the films I watch that kind of thing will happen. Yeah. But like he takes him to a remote in inverted commas cabin house, some quite nice old house. Um and then he sews him up mm. for a start and then he just puts him on drugs so to So what's the point send of him shooting sleep? him? Like to incapacitate him. Why doesn't he just like drug him? Well at that moment he was hoping that the deal would just happen that he would take the 3 million or whatever he was going to offer him and he'd go. 
and then Otter made a move, he needed to do something, so he had to use his weapon. Mm. I mean, there's not a lot of coming back once you've like shot someone with a sawn of shotgun. No. I just don't know what he thinks he's going to do in this house. It's just sending him to sleep and like, it was quite yeah. grisly, the details he goes on. If you're sat there for yeah. too long, then you'll get bed sores, then you'll get gangrenous or whatever, mm. and then the worms. Like, okay, is that your plan? <laughs> to be honest, he'd be better off just being like, right, I've done a murder now. I've got to commit. Bury the body out in mm. the woods. Um, He was never seen again. The end. You might have got away with that. He might have got away with that. His whole plan makes no sense. Because if he'd scared Otter enough and get him to say, I'll stay away, there's obviously no guarantee of that. Mm. So, yeah. And wouldn't Otter just be spurred on to vengeance? You'd think so. There'd be a sequel. Mm. It would probably <laughs> have a little... It could either have loads more action or it could just be like the coda of this film where he... Just like came and killed Finner in the night. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. Got to get out. Set the light. First fight, not so hard to make. Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Did you kill me? Yeah, I did that. Did you get a hit there? We're together now, so we're not going to get caught. Set the light. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? How the film kind of, I know we're racing through it here, but how it kind of plays out because we are saying how Finn is this like controlled guy who's got his plans. Mm. And then he has to really, really quickly figure out another plan. I think there's a way in which this could have worked. The plot machinations could have worked here if it felt more accidental that he shot him. So if, for example, he'd said, right, let's go out here into the middle of nowhere. We'll do this deal. Yeah. And then clearly, you know, Otar had brought a gun or something. And then he accidentally turned it on him and he shot him. And then he thinks, oh, God, what am I going to do? But the whole point is that he's he's planned this. He's like, you know, got the hunting lodge ready with like tarpaulin. Yeah, true. Very Dexter. He's got all the drugs ready. If he'd had to do all of that, like retrospectively to deal with the fact that he'd accidentally almost killed him. Mm. That I think could have made a sense of those plot holes that we have there about what what is he aiming to do here? Where he's kind of, his hand is forced. I mean, it is forced just by a movement rather than another weapon. But it just didn't feel, that scene didn't feel very like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. It's all gone wrong. This wasn't meant to happen. It felt like, oh, well, that was kind of inevitable. If you turn up to a confrontation with a gun and a plan to, like, hold a body somewhere. I don't know how he was going to incapacitate him. Unless, yeah, the gun was enough of an incentive to just be like, okay, tie me up and I'll come with you. Maybe, this is a thought I'm having right now, and it's not (laughs) alluded to in the film, but maybe he was just going to take Otter back to that place and the drugging of him was just to bide time until Finner got enough time alone with him to, like, inject him with poison and dismember his body and get rid of it. But he could, why didn't he dismember his body then? I don't know. He didn't have enough time. He was back and forth to that hospital like a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. In and out, in and out, in and I out. I think it just all got a bit muddy, what was happening there and what the plan was and what was meant to happen and what wasn't meant yeah. to happen. Yeah. Maybe that's like a reflection of Finner's state of mind as well because... Once he's back at that house, it's like, oh, shit, now I need to be back at the hospital. Mm. And then he's like, oh, my God, I'm shaking. I'm doing this operation. And this is the other thing. He's like, he's trying to save his daughter. And then he's like, basically going to kill this nine year old boy because Mm. of his dumb actions. Malpractice. Proper. And he's like back and forth. And obviously it goes wrong. And maybe just this kind of that there is no real plan. And that's a reflection of everything that's going on in his world at the time. I don't know. I'm trying yeah. to think of the timeline. He does take him to that house before this operation on the boy, though, doesn't he? So, yeah, I'm not sure. Mm. I did think that the 
direction of travel wasn't quite as satisfying as I'd hoped it was going to be uh, with this in that he ends up... So Otto, like, tries to escape, basically. Yeah. He does Just quite a good job Pretty good job. Like pretty using his job. tongue and his teeth. Um. Then, so then they have this fight and Finn mm-hmm. is saying, I didn't want this to happen, beating him, like, to death, essentially. Then it's like, oh, no, I've beaten him to death. <laughs> So I'll take him to the hospital. That was an interesting choice as well. Ditch yeah. him outside A and E and run in myself. Put my scrubs on. Mate, the timing of that was impeccable. Very good. But I mean he would definitely be caught on CCTV. No doubt about it. Er <laughs> 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 But again, I was like, okay, so this is going to be some big redemptive moment in which then he saves, saves his him. life at the end. And it's all this Hippocratic oath he's going to take his life, but actually he saves his life. But we didn't get that ending. No, but we did see that he tried to save him. So there is some... Like, do you want to kill him or do you want to save him? Make your mind up. I think once he did kill him, he was like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have killed him. Let me see if I can <laughs> raise him, him from the dead. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, his his motives were a bit c- confused by the end, I suppose. Um, and it gets even weirder because he decides to tell Anna that he did it. And everyone knows he did it. They just can't for some reason. I mean, there must be so much evidence. Look at the CCTV, please. Like, it seems like the police haven't a clue how to like pin it on him. They basically know that he did something bad to him, that he probably switched plates that he met him at the gym, all of that circumstantial stuff, but nothing concrete. And like, I don't know, if Anna was to go, oh, my dad just told me he killed my boyfriend, maybe that would be the final <laughs> nail in the coffin. I don't know. She wouldn't do that. Well, she doesn't. No. But do you think she may well have now there's quite, disowned her There's dad. quite an abrupt ending to this film. I mean, that is it, isn't it? Mm. That conversation they have where it, he's accidentally reveals that he spoke to Otto after he went missing. Yeah, I mean, it's very different to Taken in that respect, because it's like, oh, yeah, your daughter's alive. Never really felt like she was, like, going to die. Mm-hmm. But are you, yeah, what's your relationship now? Yeah, well, what do you see as relationship now? Is that over? I guess so. But where's she going to go? Because she doesn't have the one person who was her mm. crutch. I don't know. I suspect she'll find another person who can supply her with drugs. Mm. So you think that the whole, his whole mission was to save her. Do you think that that was all in vain? Well, Has it worked against him? Well, yeah. I would say the final act of his plan was in vain. I think he put up a good fight with the kind of blackmail and the planting. (laughs) But when he, when he got to that point, why just it's just a bit too much of a leap to go well then i'll kill him Mm. i think and oh but actually i won't kill him (laughs) i'll kill him then i'll save him (laughs) yeah so did you not find the end satisfactory no not massively 
I'm trying to think of another situation which I would have found more satisfying. That he saved him, yeah. but somehow he went to prison because he got found out as a drug dealer. Yeah, that's not that exciting either. No. I'm glad I'd rather he died. I think maybe they maybe again this is another case of a great premise that maybe then they couldn't quite decide a way to really stick the knife in at the end. Maybe it should have gone all the way and Otter dies. Finna reveals the situation and Anna's like, well, as she says, I'm madly in love with him. The love of my life is gone. And then she offs herself. Oh, God. Have How many times have I said that recently, that a film should end with the character <laughs> killing themselves? Pretty bad, isn't it? Um, but that would have been more of a sting. Like, mm. oh, Finna, you know, we know you had a good... That reason. would have been quite Shakespearean, wouldn't it? You know, yeah. he everything he did was to save her. And in fact, that's what killed her. Yeah, his plans led to her... Demise. Yeah. Mm. That's how Shakespeare would have ended it. Baltasar, if you're listening, <laughs> maybe go back in the edit. I don't know. So that's that is the film. Um, I want to do a shout out to Hilda Gudnadottir, who we've mentioned a few times over the course of this podcast. She's one of the fa- she's one of the most famous Icelandic composers in the world. Obviously, Joker, and more recently, she did Tar. Oh, great work! Women talking. Haven't seen it. Oh, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, most recently, A Haunting in Venice. Oh, random! Yeah, how random! But yeah, again, I do love the cello sound and she's she is amazing. And I think it worked really well. Um, some chilling scenes with some, you know, really kind of evocative cello playing. And at the funeral as well. Oh, yeah. I thought one point there, I thought, yeah. you know, he's this shady drug dealer guy. Would he really have like a world class cellist playing at his funeral? That's so true, because we've seen that guy before, you know, that cellist. He, I think he popped up in... Do you remember that short film we watched? The documentary where Ingvar goes swimming. Ingvar, <laughs> yeah. who's in this film, very briefly. Yeah. Um, I think he was in a pause ellipse. I think mm. they talked to him. Because just the hair rang a bell. Big hair. But I might, I mean, I might be wrong. I haven't revisited a pause ellipse. But yeah, then I Googled him and he's a famous cellist. Mm. At a drug dealer's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Did you that take you right out of the film? It did a tiny bit, but I still enjoyed the playing. Fair enough. It was it was good. It was very good. On that point, on this funeral point, we meet Otter's mum. Yeah. Why do you think we met her? Uh, I think to round out his... To give him a bit more, like, characterization, I think, again, and, and a bit more humanity, mm. that she wasn't some, like, monster or whatever. And obviously he kind of has this dark story about his mum, him and his mum being abused by a, step, or yeah. uh, by a stepfather. But I think it's just also to give that sense of, oh yeah, he's gone missing and people care that he's gone missing. Yeah. So he's not just a straight villain. And also Finna then knows he's responsible for this woman's suffering mm-hmm. that her son has gone missing. Yeah. You know, like he's kind of saving his daughter at the expense of that child um, in the surgery. Yeah. And also Otar is someone's child as well. It's true. Even if he's a knobhead. See, I came out of this not really liking or caring that Otter died. But it sounds Mm. like you might have cared a bit more. You felt a bit more for Otter than... And like you're supposed to, clearly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he clearly was very bad 
many ways. Yeah. But I did think he was slightly, he was given more respect and, and um, fleshed out more than just a cardboard pantomime villain. Yeah, for sure. He reminded me, actually, thinking of it. Have you seen the pictures of um, Skarsgård? Not Alexander or Stellan. The other... Well, there's like loads more, but um, the one who played It. He is... (laughs) Yeah, the one who played It. (laughs) (laughs) He is about to play The Crow. Have you ever seen The Crow with Brandon Lee? The one where he died on the set? Yeah, that guy. Um, So, whatever his name is, Skarsgård, is playing... The Crow in a new version. Okay, he's not playing Brandon Lee. He's not playing Brandon Lee. He's playing the character Brandon Lee. Okay. Um, that's how films work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like Otter was dressed in very much the same outfit as New Crow Man. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, I'll keep an eye out for that. Um, and there's been a bit of a backlash to the to the New Crow look. Oh, really? It's what? That it's lame? It just looks pretty lame. I do think that the drug dealer aesthetic in this film was quite lame and her she was wearing like a terrible cap and then like a a t-shirt with like a big dog on it and i was like (laughs) i feel like it's a bit on the nose yeah there was that one scene where she's just wearing all white like a floaty white outfit you can't even remember that (laughs) maybe it was a dream um but yeah that was a different film that was a (laughs) different We've seen Hera Hilmar a lot. Maybe maybe it was one of her others. So Brian, One final note, because it took me by surprise, seeing Thorstein Backman with a skinhead. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> yeah. I've never seen him without hair before. And it took me by surprise. I did not know what to make mm. of it. Um, so there, have that image as we end this podcast and say thank you to everybody for listening again. Thanks. We've had some great feedback. We've set up a discord in the process of this series. Do you even know what that is? No, I'm too old. I think I might be too old to really (laughs) understand it, but we do have one and I will occasionally log on and chat if people are there. So give it a go. We've got a Wikipedia page, which is all lovely and full. Um, and yeah, it's been fun. We got to see some current films. Yeah, there's been some good stuff this season. Yeah. Do you have a favourite of the uh, six we've covered this year? Hmm. Let me think in my mind what we've done. So, Nurse from Helga, Driving Mum, The Oath, Wild Game, Northern Comfort. Help. Cruelty. Cruelty. Yes. Well, that's not my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been two weeks. Um, my favourite, I would say, is Wild Game. Amazing. Great. Yes. Yeah, it's a good one. For kind of middle class hysteria mm-hmm. and a bit of sardonic, cynical worldview. Hmm. And your favourite, Gisli Owen Garthus. Yeah, except... <laughs> If I could transplant him, his look from this one <laughs> into Wild Game, the film, yeah. then perfect. 10 out of 10. Yeah, okay, great. Well, since you're not going to ask, my favourite one of this series <laughs> is um, Driving Mum. Really? Okay. It just has so much quirky stuff in it. I loved it. Love seeing Thomas Le Marquis. I think, you know, Driving Mum is a... Uh, Noe Albanoe 2.0 debate between us that's that so you're going to like it and I'm yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't heard our episode on Noe Albanoe, that's a good one. Go watch the film as well. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Thank you again to everybody and uh, we'll be back again at some point. Let us know if there's anything you want us to cover and maybe we'll just pop up every now and then with a film. Maybe we could do an older film. Yeah. That'd be exciting. I'd do that. Yeah. (laughs) You hear that, everybody? It's on the record. Ellie will do an older film. Um, Brilliant. Thanks, Ellie. Thanks, Rob. So there we go. Our final film for this series. Not quite the sum of its parts, but still a tense psychological thriller with familiar names attached. 
What did you think of the oath? Were you convinced that Anna was addicted to drugs? Could you make sense of Finna's plan? And is it actually possible to kickstart a heart with the prod of a finger? We've covered another six films this series, four from the 2020s and two from the latter half of the 2010s. If there are any other Icelandic films currently available to watch in the UK that you'd like us to cover, please get in touch. And like we said, if there are older titles you want to hear us chat shit about, then send them our way too and we'll see what we can do. In the meantime, you can contact us on the socials or by email, that's quickmindapod at gmail.com. And if you like, you can sling us the cost of a coffee on ko-fi.com as a reward of sorts for putting the pod together. Thanks once again to everyone for listening and engaging with the films and the podcast. And here's to more Icelandic movies coming soon. See you later. Tack bless. Thanks and goodbye.